So good afternoon, all of you. I hope I'm audible and visible. Please give me a quick. My audio video is fine. Please give me a quick thumbs up, Ravi, Kostu, Kirtana. If my audio video is fine. So welcome all of you in this afternoon session, and um, let me upload the file for everyone. <clears throat> Okay. So welcome, Dr. Jishna, Manu, Sachi. Then we have uh, Dr. Monica, Konoje, Rameshwar, Anurag, Salman, Aruna. Welcome all my dear students in this session of FMG. Now from tomorrow, a small notice. From tomorrow, I'll be taking these sessions at 9:30 p.m. Uh, I hope you remember. I've told you that I will be taking the sessions. From 9:30 to 10:30 uh, p.m. from 6th October to 10th of October. So all those students who are attending my class regularly at 2:30 p.m., please remember the tomorrow's time will be different from 6th to 10th of October. Okay, ji. I think uh, we have a lot of students. So let's begin. I'm Dr. Cheshta Garwal, your new teacher educator on An Academy, and you're on the best online platform. Uh, yes, Dr. Jin. The evening sessions will be uh, INI CT sessions. The morning sessions are the uh, FMG sessions. So from tomorrow, uh, from six to ten, we have all the sessions for INI CT. Okay. Now you are on the best online platform that is An Academy, and we have a lot of new courses for you. So let me introduce that from tomorrow we have four batches which are starting: FMG batch. INI CT batch, NEET PG, and clinical case discussion batch. I request all my dear students to please be a part of any of these batches. I'll be taking dermatology starting from tomorrow, 10 a.m. to 2:30 p.m. So we have daily four-hour classes for dermatology till 10th. So I request everybody to please be live on an academy at these times. We have two type of subscriptions, plus and iconic. Plus, give you an access to an academy live classes from the top educators. You can have access to question bank of an academy, and if you get a longer subscription of one year, you will get printed notes. An academy notes is available. Another is iconic, which give you a combination of an academy and prep ladder. And in prep ladder, you have clinical integrated essentials, video lectures, question bank. Rapid revision snapshots, treasure or dream notes. So I request all my dear students to please be a part of Iconic subscription. You will also get an Academy notes in Iconic subscription. The prices of Plus are uh, you have shorter subscriptions also three months, six months. So I recommend all of you those who are targeting this year exam, please take either a three month or a six month. And in fact, if you are targeting NEET PG 2022 also. Need PG the next year we are expecting it a little bit earlier, so I think six months would be enough for plus. You can take iconic also, which is longer subscriptions of one year, one and a half, two, three, four. Whatever you take, I request everybody to put a code here, and the code is Cheshta10. I request all of you to put a code here, and the code is Cheshta10. Clear all of you. This will give you additional 10% discount. Uh, we have a highly effective question bank, and now we also give the explanations of the questions along with the answers. A very important note is that on uh, 17th October, that is next Sunday, next to next Sunday, we have a free grand test of INICT, where you will be given three hours and 200 questions, and you will get a All India rank also. So I request everybody to please attend this free monthly grand test. We are also having a NEET PG combat, which is from, uh, which is on uh, 10th of October, 11 a.m. Three hour, sorry, one hour session of 45 questions, and the top 200 rankers will get the scholarship, either 100%, 75, 50, or 25%, depending upon the rank. Please use my code Cheshta10 to get an academy subscription. Please use my referral code Cheshta10 to get enrollment into this batch. So please give me a thumbs up if you are ready for the today's session. We have a lot of MCQs. Everyone, I need a quick thumbs up. Very nice. Starting with the first question of the today's session. 
We have discussed this a few days back, I remember. A patient of leprosy presents with painful lesions on arm as shown. He is also febrile. He is given a drug which increases the numbness of hands and feet. What is the likely diagnosis? What is the likely diagnosis? Clofazamine, rifampicin, thalidomide, or prednisolone. So only 20% have given me the answer. Can you tell me what are these lesions called as? Anyone? What are these lesions which you can see here? In a patient of leprosy, a very nice costume. It is iridema nodosum leprosum. Now, iridema nodosum leprosum is what? It is a lepra reaction. What? Which type? One or two? Costume. This is type 2 lepra reaction. Now, tell me if it is type 2 lepra reaction, what drug among the options provided would be the preferred drug? You can give prednisolone, which is the drug of choice. Rifampicin, we are anyway giving MDT, so there is no point of giving rifampicin in addition. And clopazamine is usually not very effective in treating type 2 lepra reaction. So prednisolone and thalidomide. Okay, so these two are the best answers. But the second line of the question says that the drug which is given to this patient has increased the numbness of hand and feet. Can you tell me, will prednisolone cause this? No. In thalidomide, you have a very common side effect of peripheral neuropathy. Peripheral neuropathy. And this peripheral neuropathy is associated with increased numbness of hands and feet. Clear all of you? Rameshwar, Dr. Arav, Kaushik, those who have joined just now, please give me a thumbs up if this question is clear. Very interesting. Type 2 lepra reaction. Can anybody tell me? Type 2 is which hypersensitivity reaction? Very nice. And how to remember this? Do we have any mnemonic to remember this? There is a mnemonic which is rule of 5. Very nice. What is rule of 5? The type 2 is type 3 hypersensitivity reaction. That is equals to 5. And type 1 is type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. That is also 5. So please remember this is a... Uh, mnemonic to remember the lepra reactions, hypersensitivity. Okay, ji, understood? Anybody have heard this for the first time? Yes or no? Anyone who have heard this for the first time? No. Chal. Very well done. So peripheral neuropathy is a very frequently seen side effect. And can you just recall very, very quickly what are the other side effects? What are the other side effects of thalidomide? Quickly, can you remember or recall them for me? Uh, yes, teratogenicity, which is known as phocomalia. Very well done. Anything else? Teratogenicity, which is also known as phocomalia. Phocomalia. Peripheral neuropathy, we have just now read. Anything else? Anybody? Rameshwar, what, what does it mean? C-O-N-S. You have... Constipation, okay, maybe CONS means constipation, okay. Constipation, very well done. Third or fourth is edema. You have peripheral edema, which is seen very frequently. Fifth is anybody, somnolence. Somnolence means these patients complain of increased sleepiness. So these are some of the features or some of the side effects of giving, uh, giving thalidomide. Now, can anybody tell me at what dosage, like what? What mg of uh, thalidomide is available in the market? Like isotretinoin, which is available in 10%, 20%, even you get it in 30, 40%. Uh, you know, like so, uh, rifampicin is different, different mgs. Can you tell me thalidomide? What about thalidomide? Very nice, Kaushik. Very well done. Thalidomide tablet is available in 100 mg. Okay. Can you tell me what should be the starting dose in a patient? who has type 2 lepra reaction and if you are thinking of giving thalidomide. Anyone? Anybody knows the WHO protocol of starting thalidomide? 
this you can get in your exam please remember you start with a higher dose of 400 mg per day okay and then you taper it very very slowly you taper it like in one month you will make it 300 for the next month you will continue 300 and you will give 200 later on then you will do it 150 then you can do it 100 then 50 and so on so please remember the thalidomide has to be given in a very higher dose and tapering should be very low understood this point theek hai okay ji i hope that this question is clear no confusion should we go to the next one should we go to the next one very nice all my dear students this is a repeat question i think we have done it uh, recently very nice lega rameshwar raj vaishnavi adrenalin dr rj aruna faith gk anurag akshat shabana atul very well done all my dear students very well done. and welcome sumit praveen vaishnavi raj nazia roshan welcome to the session now what is given in the question the best single drug which can treat the gonococcus and non gonococcal infection please remember the answer is azithromycin and if you remember i have asked you one more thing that what drug should be combined uh, you know for taking a better coverage of the mixed infection please remember the combination of cefexim and azithromycin is preferred but there is no such option given in the question and that is why we have marked option number 1 can you tell me which kit contain both these drugs which kit contain both these drugs it is kit number 1 and what about the color of this kit very nice rameshwar raj and kaushik it is gray color please remember the content of the different kits are very very important can you remember can you tell me which other std kit contain azithromycin which other std kit contain azithromycin in them you can tell me uh, at least two tell me at least two other than kit 1 which other stds uh, very nice please remember raj it is not two and it is not two and five you are absolutely wrong it is three and four and please remember even kit number 7 the black color kit can also have azithromycin but three and four they are for the non herpetic genital ulcer if you remember 3 and 4 both are for non herpetic genital ulcer in 3 you have benzathine penicillin you have benzathine penicillin plus azithro and what about what about 4 you have doxycycline plus azithro 4 is given to those non herpetic genital ulcers which are allergic to penicillin i hope you all remember this ठीक है, so please give me a thumbs up that the correct answer is three and four, and that is why Raj, I am requesting you that from tomorrow I am starting a plus course. Please do join using the referral code Cheshta ten. You can take a three month or six month subscription, whatever suits you. But please do not miss this opportunity. I N I C T continuous two years we are getting the questions from uh, the kit, the S T D fifty percent questions from S T D we are getting. so please do not miss this opportunity take your subscription today you can go with the shorter subscription and if you go for a one year subscription you can get the printed notes as well chalo ji badhiya so i think this question is done let's let's move to the another question very interesting let me know if you all uh, know the difference between the dosage please tell me the answer of this question
I am very very sorry for this. There is a monkey in my balcony, so <laughs> I have to go. Anyways, chalo. So very nice. Lega, Doctor uh, Parvat, Rameshwar, Edwin Allen, Aruna, Manu, uh, M S. Very well done, all my dear students. I know Raj. They are they are very very irritating uh, animals, and uh, we have shifted to a new place. So so many monkeys there. Chalo. Anyways. So, 12-year-old child. Now, please remember uh, the MDT of leprosy. Uh, you have uniform MDT for different presentation of leprosy, but we have different dosage for adult as well as for children. Now, please remember in adult the dosage is you give rifampicin 600 mg daily, clofazamine 300 mg. Sorry, you give rifampicin 600 mg per month. Clofazamine 300 mg per month, Depson 100 mg per day, and Clofazamine 50 mg per day. This is the adult dosage. But how does this differs from the children dosage? Please remember, the rifampicin becomes 450 mg, Clofazamine becomes 150, while daily Depson becomes 50 mg, and Clofazamine becomes 50 alternate day. I request everyone to please remember this because sometimes you get confused in the exam that what is the difference in the dosage of adult and childhood leprosy. The duration is same, six months for PB and 12 months for MB. Now, can you tell me when will you, <clears throat> when will you call a patient defaulter? When will you call a patient as a defaulter patient? Anyone? Ma'am, to prescribe two months, why do we have to check comorbidities like anemias? Uh, OK, so. I am not able to understand your question. You are asking the treatment of cutaneous tuberculosis or in general you are uh, asking the questions with respect to the treatment of TB because we are discussing leprosy here. I don't know suddenly from where this question came. Now, now please remember there are many, many drugs like rifampicin, isoniazide, pyrazinamide. They all affect the liver. They all affect the internal organs. <clears throat> And that is why you always need to have a background check, a follow-up check, or a baseline check of all these organs. And that is why you check for the, like rifampicin is associated with anemia also, liver toxicity also. So you need to do a baseline investigations for that. Understood, Rameshwar? <clears throat> Himanshu and all the other students, please give me a thumbs up if you understood this question. Chaloj. Now let's uh, start with the next question. Can you tell me what is the answer here? <clears throat> very nice, Vaishnavi. Very well done. Later. So the patient with leprosy uh, lesions since seven days. So you can see these are the lesions in a patient of leprosy. The lesions are painful, but there is no fever. What is the drug of choice? First of all, tell me what is the diagnosis here? Because only 50% of you have answered this question. What is the diagnosis here? What is the diagnosis here? Is it ENL? No. This is a type 2 lepra reaction. It is a sorry, it is not type 2, it is type 1 lepra reaction. It is not ENL, it is a reversal reaction. Now, why I'm saying that it is not a type 2 lepra reaction? Because in type 2, you see nodules, subcutaneous nodules, which is looking very similar to iridema nodosum. But how type 1 present? It presents with increase in the size or redness or edema of the existing lesions. And can you see these are the plaque? which are now becoming more inflamed, more edematous, more red. Can you see these two plaques? They are showing the signs of inflammation. So this is how a type 1 lepra reaction presents. Understood, Kospub and Rameshwar? Please give me a thumbs up. And welcome, Bachu, Fatima, Dr. Uh, Deren. <clears throat> uh, please remember this point. Very, very important for your exam. Okay, ji? Chal. Now the question is, what is the drug of choice? Remember, whether it is type 1 or a type 2, drug of choice is, what is the drug of choice, whether it is type 1 or type 2? It is always corticosteroids. Okay, type 2 ke liye bhi, remember it is corticosteroid. It is not thalidomide. 
please do not mark that question wrong okay type 2 drug of choice is corticosteroids only but if they give you an exam the drug of choice for type 2 uh, for type 2 lepra reaction in a post menopausal women will the answer change drug of choice in post menopausal women will the answer change or it remain same and if it changes you have to tell me what will be the answer very nice please remember if they write these words like drug of choice in post menopausal women or they write the drug of choice of lepra reaction type 2 in men okay if they are writing this it means they want the answer as thalidomide Koshik, the answer will change and it becomes thalidomide because the only reason we are not giving thalidomide or we are not keeping it as a drug of choice is because of side effect like the, uh, the uh, phocomelia or teratogenicity but in the postmenopausal women and in men, you don't have any risk of teratogenicity. Okay. So these are some of the questions. And here the answer is option number four, that is corticosteroids. Understood? Any confusion here? Yes or no? No confusion? Should we go to the next one? Okay. Very nice, Aruna, Kostub, Manish, Lega, Rameshwar. Dr. Parvat, Fatima, Vedashri, Vaishnavi, Jasmine. Very well done, all of you. Very well done. Now, can you tell me what is the diagnosis here? Yes, it is a classical case of the green discharge, strawberry cervix, trichomonas vaginalis. And in trichomonas vaginalis, you give metronidazole. Can you tell me which kit you will use to treat trichomonas vaginalis? Which STD kit you will use? Rameshwar, what do you mean by W? W means white. Will you use white color kit? No. You will use kit number two. Fatima, kit number two. Kit number one is what? Kit number one is urethritis. Kit number two is vaginal discharge. And if you remember, I've told you a mnemonic for remembering it. For holding the content of vagina, we use sanitary napkins. And the famous brand of sanitary napkin is in green color. I hope you remember. So kit number two is green. This is a easy way to remember the color of the kit. Okay, so kit number two is green in color. Can you tell me what is the content of the kit two? Yes, very nice, Kaushik. It is Sepnidazole. Sepnidazole plus Fluconazole, Secnidazole plus Fluconazole. Okay, Fluconazole 150 mg and Secnidazole 1 gram. We have two tablets available inside. Okay, so Secnidazole 1 gram, two tablets and Fluconazole 150 mg, single tablet in kit number two, that is green color. So please try to remember all these kits. They they get. Uh, you know, uh, you get questions in your exams. You have to either match the following the color or the indications of the kit. So you get the questions very frequently from them. Okay, ji. Very nice. Very funny. Let's move to the next question. Aage bade. Okay, this is a multiple choice question. So I am giving you four options. Please mark among them. One, two, three. One, two, four. One, two, five and one five like one four five
now please tell me the answer i think you all can see the poll now can you see uh, can you all see the poll yes or no can you all see the poll yes no actually it's a very tricky question but although the options which i made is little easy for you to remember what do you mean by sporotrichoid pattern anyone i can see there's one confusion wala smiley first of all tell me what do you mean by sporotrichoid pattern what do you mean by sporotrichoid pattern anyone can tell me the answer here what do you mean by sporotrichoid pattern sporotrichoid means linear pattern along the lymphatic sinus very nice question so along the lymphatics in which among the following you will see the spread of the lesions everybody knows that sporotrichoid pattern is in sporotrichs so two to sahi ho gayi hoga and option number 4 is absolutely wrong now in all the three you have option number 1 so lupus vulgaris may be hoga and the third is fish tank granuloma which is actually a atypical mycobacterial infection and can you tell me the name of atypical mycobacteria which causes this what is the name of that species which causes fish tank granuloma anyone mycobacterium marinum very nice which group it belongs photochromogens cotochromogens non uh, chromogens or what yes it belongs to photochromogen please remember the fish tank granuloma or the swimming pool granuloma also have a spread through lymphatics so sporotrichoid pattern is seen in option number 1 2 and 4 clear or not this is important question because everybody knows sporotrix shanki causing sporotrichosis that spread in a linear pattern but other than this you have the two more uh, infectious causes which has the spread through the sporotrichoid pattern i can see one confusion wala smiley can you ask what is the confusion can you just write down what is the confusion and the other students will solve the next question okay so mohit adrenaline monica vedashwi shat uh, shatnik so not much of you could answer this question now this is a very classical case of procaine psychosis which is also known as hoogie syndrome which is also known as hoogie syndrome now tell me what is the treatment of choice for syphilis what drug will you give to take care of syphilis patients anyone so for syphilis we give benzathine penicillin you give benzathine penicillin for syphilis but benzathine penicillin do not cross blood brain barrier it do not cross blood brain barrier and that is why for neurosyphilis for neurosyphilis you prefer procaine penicillin or crystalline penicillin theek hai ji we prefer procaine penicillin or crystalline penicillin now procaine penicillin it comes in crystals and before infusing it we have to dilute it we have to dissolve the crystals sometimes because of abnormal uh, you know dilution when we are in hurry and we are not we have not diluted the uh, crystals properly it get precipitated themselves into the blood vessels causing the symptoms of procaine psychosis so the patient will have physical mental confusions visual auditory hallucinations abnormal body shapes swelling fear of impending death etc so please remember if a syphilis patient develop all these features secondary to an injectable always think about procaine psychosis or hoogie syndrome yes aqueous crystalline penicillin that's what ramesh told aqueous crystalline penicillin is the best answer clear all of you
एनी कंफ्यूजन विद दिस क्वेश्चन ठीक है आगे बढ़े सो प्लीज रिमेम्बर अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट विच यू ऑल हैव टू रिमेम्बर विद रेस्पेक्ट टू सिफिलिस ट्रीटमेंट नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन आई थिंक इट्स अ वेरी वेरी इजी क्वेश्चन रामेश्वर डॉक्टर पर्वत कौस्तुभ डॉक्टर आरजे वेदाश्री मनीष राज एड्रीन जैसमिन मनु वेरी वेल डन ऑल माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स ओके जी सो ओके सो राज इज एक्चुअली यू नो शेयरिंग द इंटरनल स्टफ दैट इन इन हिज हॉस्टल देर आर अ लॉट ऑफ students who have this tinea cruris lesions now tinea cruris please remember whenever we use word tinea what does it tell you the infection is because of whenever we use the word tinea means not fungus candida is also fungus pityriasis versicolor is also fungus very nice cause to when it says tinea always remember that infection is from dermatophyte ठीक है एंड दैट इज वाई टीनिया वर्सिकोलर विच इज अमर समटाइम्स यू यूज वर्ड टीनिया वर्सिकोलर फॉर पिट्रियासिस वर्सिकोलर प्लीज रिमेंबर इट इज अमर इट इज रॉन्गली टर्म डेस्टीनिया इट इज नॉट अ डोमेटोफेटिक इन्फेक्शन इट इज अस्ट इन्फेक्शन बाय मेलेसिया पर्पल और ग्लोबोसा सो वेन एवर यू हैव वर्ड टीनिया ऑलवेज थिंक अबाउट डोमेटोफाइट and can anybody tell me what are the three dermatophytic species you know of what are the three dermatophytic species you know of yes microsporum trichophyton and epidermophyton so trichophyton epidermophyton and microsporum can cause tinea but aspergillus can never cause tinea because tinea means dermatophyte and this is a characteristic feature of tinea cruris understood or not can you tell me the alternate name for tinea cruris what is the alternate name for tinea cruris very nice costu can you tell me one more name yes it is also known as dhobi itch also known as jock itch and today we are giving a new name as raj said hostel edge can we can we give a new name raj as the hostel edge <laughs> chalo anyways so please remember that dubi edge and the jock edge is the name given to uh it can be yes definitely because of sharing of clothes uh, when when the clothes get washed together it can spread the infection from one person to another person so always uh, if if somebody is having the infection try to ask them not to mix the clothes with other other uh, you know individuals or students if you are living in the hostel fine next question the pure image based very nice aruna tejaswini manish अक्षत रामेश्वर वेदाश्री एड्रीन एलन कौशिक शबाना टॉफिक वेरी वेल डन ऑल माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स फातिमा अ पेरिस वुमन हैज नॉन टेंडर इंड्यूरेटेड अल्सर्स ऑन द जेनिटल्स विद नो इंग्वाइनल लिम्पिडिनोपैथी व्हाट इज योर डायग्नोसिस व्हाट इज योर डायग्नोसिस सो नॉन टेंडर एंड हार्ड अल्सर्स ऑलवेज थिंक अबाउट सिफिलिस non tender hard ulcer always think about syphilis now another very important point another very important point can you tell me one more dd can you tell me one more dd of non tender indurated ulcer anyone
yes please remember whether she you are absolutely right the correct answer is dono vanosis so there was a question i think in last inict uh, what i remember is that in dono vanosis uh, there was a question that which among the following are the indurated ulcers so indurated ulcers can be syphilis obviously but it can also be dono vanosis and how to differentiate between both by looking at the lesion in syphilis it is completely painless button like but in dono vanosis very nice rameshwar you have bt red ulcers exuberant tissue granulation tissue which bleeds on touch that is how you can differentiate dono vanosis ulcer from a syphilitic canker okay and can you tell me soft canker is an alternative name to induration means hard coccyx induration means hard okay soft canker is what very nice kostu soft canker is the name given to the ulcers of chancroid and what is the causative agent for chancroid rameshwar shatnek kaushik what about other students i want everybody to participate i know this is a very uh, odd time 2:30 to 3:30 is a time when most of the students sleep but uh, i want all of you to be awake for my classes <laughs> okay ji <clears throat> the answer is hemophilus ducre very nice hemophilus ducre is a causative agent for chancroid and chancroid has soft canker you have painful ulcers but they are soft to touch and that is also one of the very important point which helps us differentiate okay ji can you tell me the answer very nice shatnik vaishnavi mohit anjali then we have uh, rameshwar navin k shabana dr parvat adrenaline ravi vedashri saloni very well done all my dear students very nice please remember the genital ulcer is only seen in chancroid among the options provided gonorrhea will cause the urethral infections like urethritis it causes endocervicitis pelvic inflammatory disease but not the ulcers similarly trichomoniasis will have affection on the vaginal mucosa or cervical mucosa it will not cause any ulcer and tuberculosis will mainly present with inguinal lymphadenopathy less ulcers the the lymph nodes can get ruptured onto the outer surface but not of the ulcer so if it is ulcer always the answer becomes chancroid and we have just now discussed that ulcers they are soft very very painful and even you can have an associated foul smelling discharge can you tell me what is pseudo bubo and where do you see pseudo bubo anyone okay okay shatnik rameshwar kaushik they all are saying that the answer is lgv how many of you agree with them very nice dr parvat please remember pseudo bubo is a feature of lgv no it is a feature of dono vanosis while bubo is a feature of lgv okay actually bubo is a non specific term bubo means increase in the lymph node or lymph node enlargement which can be seen in any of the conditions okay ji yes so please remember that pseudo bubo is a feature of dono vanosis the organism do not involve the lymph node it has only the secondary involvement and that is why it is known as pseudo bubo not the true bubo clear or not fine next question i think it's a very very easy question 15 seconds on your screen quickly tell me the answer here Twenty eight year old boy has asymptomatic dome shaped lesions on the forehead for last two months, and the two year daughter with similar lesions. What is the most common agent? Can you tell me what is the diagnosis here? Anyone? 
yes it's a case of molluscum contagiosum and can you tell me what is the name of the virus causing molluscum contagiosum the virus is molluscum contagiosum virus theek hai koshik it is not hpv the virus is molluscum contagiosum virus which belongs to pox virus group pox virus is a broad group can you tell me koshik uh, which strain shatnik which strain is the commonest we have 1 to 4 but number 1 is the commonest cause for having uh, molluscum lesions in young or in children okay so please remember that question any confusion okay ji now we have another question on your screen very nice vaishnavi rameshwar aruna dr Par parvat manu tofik sachi manish jasmine shabana adrenaline dr rj very well done all my dear students now this is a case of scabies and scabies the treatment of choice is topical parmetra can you tell me only one indication of scabies where you give steroid as a treatment modality anyone only one indication of giving steroids very nice actually so koshik uh, is koshik is telling that it is nodular you are right you give intralesional steroids in nodular scabies and can you tell me what is the yeah that's what is my the next option please remember even in norwegian scabies which is known as crusted scabies you give steroids so there are actually two indications nodular scabies can you tell me what is the site vedashri kostu koshik what is the site of having nodules yes it is genital scrotum very common penile shaft these are the common site for development of nodules because of excessive itching so you give intralesional steroids while in norwegian scabies you give oral steroids uh, mainly oral steroids in norwegian scabies clear what is the alternate name for norwegian scabies also known as crusted scabies very nice i have told you this just now crusted scabies it is the most severe form of scabies can you tell me what are the predisposing factors for development of norwegian scabies or crusted scabies very nice so the predisposing factors are the features where you have decreased sensation of itch like mental patients uh, for example down syndrome immunocompromised patients like hiv patients okay elderly patients bedridden patients in all of them you have decreased sensitivity of itching giving rise to widespread lesions of scabies okay and in both of them you have to give oral steroids sorry in in norwegian you have to give oral while in nodular you give intralesional steroids clear uh, vidashri i hope now you understood Uh, the confusion both norwegian and nodular you give but in nodular it is intralesional and norwegian it is oral and i think you all know the mechanism of action of uh, permethrin so i'm not telling you that again and again very nice shatnik manish vaishnavi aruna fatima Rameshwar, Sachi, Dr. Ajay, Kaushik, Vedashri. Amazing, all of you. Very well done. Now, as I told you before, also bacterial vaginosis is actually a mixed infection. what do you mean by mixed infection here actually the normal commensals are overgrowing what happens in these individuals in bacterial vaginosis uh, the the normal bacteria or the bacteria which are present normally in the vagina like lactobacillus their number decreases when lactobacillus decreases what decreases the lactic acid decreases 
and when lactic acid decreases the ph of vagina increase when ph of vagina increase it makes a suitable environment for growth of all the other commensals whether it is pathogenic or it is normal commensals and few of them are gardenella mycoplasma and urea plasma and that is why the answer is all of the above or option number 1 2 and 3 understood this problem clear so please remember in bacterial vaginosis all three is the cause oh, very well done very nice all of you a 6 month old male infant develops otitis media a few days later he developed extensive peeling of the skin there were no mucosal lesion what is the most likely diagnosis here the answer is staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome and can you tell me what is the alternate name for this condition anyone can tell me the alternate name for this condition yes is it is it r e i no it is r i t t e r reuter's disease is an alternate name Can you tell me what is the name of the toxin released? Name of the toxin released it is exfoliative toxin. And can you tell me the target which is affected by this toxin? Very nice. It is desmoglein. Okay. So please remember these three points. Always remember that there is a focus of infection from which streptococcus or sorry from which staphylococcus uh, enters the circulation and release the toxin. here it is otitis media it can be tonsillitis it could be pharyngitis tonsillitis pharyngitis any of these can be the possibility of having the uh, site or the uh, focus of infection in the patient clear with this question any confusion okay ji Now the next question is here on your screen. Can you tell me the answer? Very easy question, straightforward, image-based, frequently done. Taufik, Kostub, Vaishnavi, Doctor Parvat, Saloni, Sachi. very well done very well done <clears throat> okay so please remember that the patient presented with the following lesions and can you tell me what does this lesion look like how does this lesion look like it looks like a honey colored crust it look like a yellow or honey colored crust please remember the yellow or honey colored crust is classical of impetigo herpetiformis which is an alternative name for non bullous impetigo non bullous impetigo clear clear or not yes can you tell me how does these scales of bullous impetigo looks anyone is it similar or some some difference in the color you do see scales in bullous impetigo also very nice vedashri it is varnish have you seen varnish when you paint if somebody is having paint in their house you have varnish which is a little transparent sort of uh, material so varnish like crust is a feature of bullous impetigo while honey colored crust is a feature of non bullous impetigo can you tell me any alternate name for bullous impetigo any alternate name for bullous impetigo
any alternate name somebody saying infantile somebody saying neonate aruna vedashri can you tell me kostu what is the alternate name for bullus impetigo i'm revising everything yes very nice aruna it is pemphigus neonatura can you tell me what is syphilitic pemphigus what is syphilitic pemphigus is it a variety of pemphigus or bullus impetigo what is syphilitic pemphigus very nice it is the first manifestation of congenital syphilis okay it has nothing to do with pemphigus neonatorum it is the first manifestation of congenital syphilis so please remember all these points these are very very important and actually they are frequently asked uh, asked in your exam so you need to know all these things clearly now another question multiple hypoesthetic hypopigmented macules on the right lateral forearm with numerous acid fast bacilli what will be your answer very nice dr parvat akshat kostub raj manu vedashri sachi monika shabana very well done all my dear students very well done amazing okay ji now i will tell you a very important point that how to make the diagnosis here it is written multiple so if in your exam you get few or if you get multiple what should be your options if it is written few then always think about tt leprosy or bt leprosy either tt leprosy or bt leprosy but if it is multiple then please think about bb bl and ll think about bb bl and ll if it is multiple now the confusion is how to differentiate between these three in bb you will have asymmetrical distribution asymmetrical means it is present more on one side of the body less on the other side while in both these you have symmetrical distribution they will write that patient has generalized involvement or bilaterally symmetrical involvement okay and how to differentiate between these two in bl you will see decrease in the sensation of the patches while in ll the sensation is normal understood or not please give me a quick thumbs up if you can easily differentiate now how to differentiate bt from bb from bl from ln and to differentiate between bb and tt bt in bt you have satellite lesions so these are some of the features i want all of you and for more such mnemonics i request everybody to please be live for my classes every day from tomorrow so please take a subscription i would recommend a 3 month or 6 month subscription you can even take a one year subscription so that you get a printed notes and please remember on an academy with a single subscription you get access to all the 19 subjects all the educators you can see it n number of time you can just uh, you know download the pdf for any course past or present so that is the beauty of an academy please get or please have a benefit of this now multiple so it should be either bb bl and ll hypoesthetic so ll can be ruled out and it is present mainly on the right lateral forearm so it should be somewhere in bb pole but that is not given in the question and that is why we have marked borderline leprosy understood yes or no i hope it is clear now this was a question we had recently in our uh, neat pg exam that was on erysipelas actually so i want all of you to tell me what all options are correct you have more than one options correct here you have more than one options correct can you tell me what are the options correct i am not starting the poll you have to write it on the chat section
very nice so only two students have given me the correct answer till now and i'm not telling who are those two anyone else we have at least a uh, good number of students so at least 50% to answer karo erythropelas is the infection of dermal lymphatics while cellulitis is the infection of the subcutaneous compartment and because of the involvement only of the dermis you see well demarcated lesions in erythropelas they have a raised margin it is commonly seen secondary to streptococcus common on face and it is usually unilateral so one two and four is correct and very nice vedashree and raj for the correct answers okay so please remember the correct answer is 1 2 and 4 for this question next question please answer this very nice all of you very well done very well done so lady presents with bilateral buccal reticulate white streaks pain increases on having spicy food patient gives no history of tobacco but shows amalgam on the third molar what is the diagnosis what will be your diagnosis please remember the correct answer would be option number 1 because i always tell you that whether you have history of tobacco smoking anything if they give you amalgamated tooth always mark it as the answer less like and cleanliness because amalgamated tooth is a very good risk factor can you tell me any infective cause any infective uh, trigger for like and cleanliness any infective cause for developing like and cleanliness lesions very nice uh, parvat it is hepsi ठीक है इट इज हेपेटाइटिस सी नॉट बी नॉट ए हेपेटाइटिस सी इज द आंसर okay ji so a 16 year old student reported with multiple hyperpigmented lesions on trunk and limbs all of the following tests are useful in making the diagnosis except now just read this and tell me what 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 can be the diagnosis in which pole this patient belongs anyone in which pole this patient belong can you tell me the answer just looking at the clinical presentation vedashri okay so they have written that you have multiple lesions on trunk and limbs if they have given multiple lesions on trunks and limb they have not mentioned anything about the site always remember that it is symmetrical okay so this is a case of either bb bl or ln and if it is hypopigmented lesions then it should be hypopigmented anesthetic lesions so wherever you have involvement of the nerves it should be somewhere bl or ln clear now for this poll always remember that you cannot use lepromin test because lepromin test depends upon the cell mediated immunity while towards the lepromatous poll the cell mediated immunity is negative so if you use lepromin test you can easily miss out these cases because the lepromin test remains negative uh, due to negative or absent cell mediated immunity understood all of you please give me a thumbs up shatnik vedashri uh, parvat raj faith raju all the dear students please give me a thumbs up aruna so the correct answer here is option number 2 because lepromin test is a test which depends upon type 4 hypersensitivity or cell mediated immunity so it becomes negative as a patient moves from ll to so from tt to ll so with this we are done with the today's session i hope you have enjoyed this class thank you all my dear students i request all of you to please take an academy subscription either 3 month or 6 month 
my course is starting from to tomorrow so please take 3 month or 6 month subscription for next year students the best is one year of iconic use my code cheshta10 to get an academy subscription so bye bye all of you take care and good day